All right, welcome back everybody. This is the next episode and like I promised, I have a little bit of an unusual um, filling system, one I don't think I've seen very much and this actually is my first one that I've seen. This is a um, stretch vacuumatic and I just wanted to throw this one on after we did the oversized uh, vacuumatic just to kind of say, hey, there are other ones out there and just honestly for me to see how this pen was gonna clean up and work. So this is a Miller fountain pen. Um, like a quick search on the internet, let me see that this is a Danish pen, maybe made by a, like in Germany for a Danish company. Um, and that this particular Danish, Danish gentleman, not the one here, but um, I'll, I'll say his name better. Um, and I'll get it correct after we come back and do the writing sample, but this is a Danish patented filling system that just simplifies the vacuumatic kind of diaphragm system. And I have it mostly taken apart because it was a bit of a bear to get some of these pieces apart. And I wanted to make sure I could do it and not break it before I showed you on camera. So here's pretty much undone. Um, a lot of this is kind of routine stuff. We have just the cap clip cap and clip held on by just this little easily screw on screw off kind of plastic finial cap piece and that was pretty straightforward um, i do want to point out this has actually really nice kind of greek art deco um freeze pattern and i like that maybe that's what caught my eye originally about it, it was just the kind of greek art deco-ness about it because i'm a big fan of art deco and this almost has like a very classic European, um, not quite a pelican um, kind of essence to it, but it's a very simple kind of sweeping um, clip with a little bit of a step on it, or a lip, I don't know what to call that, but very simple. Um, what I'll zoom back out here, sorry for the blur. We have a nice nib and it's a little bit cleaned up. I don't have it completely polished up yet, but it just says Miller. What does it say? Miller pen 14 carat. And it looks like it's going to be a little bit flexible and that's just me pushing on it. And of course, move back out. We have the section, which is a threaded in section. This was like probably the hardest part for me. Well, one of two hard parts. Like this was really well glued in there. So it took me quite a bit of heat, a little bit of soaking, a little bit more heat and just a lot, a lot of tries just to get that undone. But it, I got it. And this is the feed with its little breather hole that also goes into it. And that sits actually fairly deep into it. And then we have the barrel and I have this still somewhat put together because I want to show you the taking apart aspect of it as much as I can and it's a very nice barrel it's got this nice transparency that I don't know if I'd call that chevron or fish scale or anything but it's got this nice ink viewing ability even though it looks like a black pen it has this nice uh, clarity to it and I like that a lot and then the money part is the mechanism so this seems like a button filler and actually the button would fall out that way comes there and the other oh, I almost forgot I can't do it that way there's the threaded end and this does come apart and I did have to really really work on this as well but it just comes out too it's a fully threaded barrel so that half goes in and the other half will grip the blind cap which is just a fairly simple blind cap. No imprint that I can see on it. And this is the magic. This is the little metal bit. And I haven't fully cleaned it up. I got most of the sack off, but it needs a little bit of cleaning. Let's see if I can zoom in and show anything meaningful. Let's find the focus. There we go. And it just has this part where you would ideally, maybe I'll fake it. I already have a sack pulled out that I'm going to use for it. But what we would have, if we can imagine it, is this sack is going to be cut down. We're going to have the plunger inside of it. And then we are going to have 
this guy sits over here such that the sack is now crimped between this metal piece and the wall of the barrel so that's what's going to seat it and then as you push the button this plunger which actually slides all the way through this thing is held in place by the sack on this side and this little uh, threaded barrel which would keep it from backing out if I'm not mistaken yeah keep it from backing out so that's you just button it you just put, press it down and it's the sheer elasticity of the sack that's going to bring it back to itself and so just like the vacuumatics that have the more springy spring loaded mechanism your mechanism you're just going to push down create the vacuum and bring it back so in a sense and i'll be cutting this down this is just me kind of showing walking you through it initially and i'll tell you what the hardest part i would say was actually getting the metal part out of here because after all this time it had been caked and dried and the bit of sack that was down in here really cemented the metal piece to the wall so i was soaking and heating and pushing 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 and it took me a minute but i finally got it out and more than a minute this took days for me to get this piece out and i'll point out one other thing and i've already done a little bit of a repair on it so this is like a rubberized piece so you can see a little bit still remains but down here at the tip there's a lot of rubber broken off um, it was kind of jagged it wasn't round and smooth um, and it was good and then where the sack had been adhered it kind of dug out this ring along the side as well so what i did and it's not fully you know perfect and i might go back and add a little bit myself later was Initially, I used rubber cement thinking, oh, this feels like a little rubberized kind of plastic piece, so maybe I should, you know, recreate that. So I tried to fill in the gaps with rubber cement, but this being a very, fairly smooth surface, it just peeled right off. So what I wound up doing is, let's see if I can take that back out anymore. So just some black um, super glue, and I would take a toothpick yeah, it was a toothpick basically, and I kind of worked the super glue into some of the defects. Um, and I kind of even dipped the tip and just kind of rolled it around to kind of get the ends filled in. And just today, this morning, just before the video, I actually took some sandpaper and some micro mesh and just kind of worked to see how well it would polish. And I think that actually looks pretty good. Like I say, I have a little bit more to do right around the tip. Not the tip, but the edge there. Let's see if I can figure out how to get you guys a better photo. But I think that's good. And I think I did an okay job because this still, so I, I maintain the diameter, still passes through. A little bit of a tightness there, which maybe I'll need to sand that down a little bit, take some of the edge off, um, just to make it a little bit more smooth. But overall, I think that's good. And it'll fit nicely into the sack, into the rounded bit of the sack. And yeah, minimize the trauma. And this size 18 sack, a little bit of a tightness, but I can put some talc on that and that'll help it out. At least I'll figure out where to cut this thing. And so we'll have a good tight fit. And I might even have to upsize that. I wonder, 18 or 19. But anyway, so here's everything taken apart. Let me zoom back out for you guys. And I think by undoing it, by putting it back apart, I think you'll see what I kind of did this whole time. And we'll see what we can do. So what I'm going to do about cleaning this guy it's overall in pretty good condition. The only thing um, there's, you know, do I worry about the personalization? Do I try to take it out or leave it? Um, I don't know. I think I'll leave it. This is a Danish pen. I don't have any Danish pens, and it's kind of cool to have a Danish guy's name on my pen. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my usual taping. I'll tape off around the band. 
I'll tape over the inscription, the name, the miller, the patent, and just below it, this is actually model 648, and it's so small, I'm not gonna try to give you a headache just to focus on it, but 648. Um, what else would I do or tape off? Um, maybe not at the moment, maybe that's it. I think that's it. So I'll put everything together that I can reasonably polish together. I might even screw this back in so I can have a nice, easy, time of doing my polish and make sure there's no other inscriptions anywhere other than that so nothing horizontally around here just kind of come straight the only thing I think I would worry about there is this little knurled bit right there a bit of a lip I might actually just do it separately so I don't take off that that bit of it. I don't want to smooth that out too much. So I probably will just do this piece by itself so I can preserve this extra little lip. Uh, so I, that's that's fair. So I'll take that back out. And anything here? Is there anything there? No, that's smooth. So I think I had this in another video, but I think I wound up cutting it out. Um, do remember when you're doing your polishing to look at the feed. Oftentimes, uh, I think Parker's do it, maybe Todd's, Waterman's for sure. They'll have some little number or um, branding on the feed itself. So don't just assume it's going to be smooth and you can just start scraping it off. Always give that a double check, but I'll take care of that as well. I'll do a little bit of soaking, make sure the breather tube's nice and clear. And... I think once once the initial polishing with the micro mesh and I'll do the creams as well, we'll come back and we'll do a final put together, which would really be you and me figuring out together just how much of the sack to to cut to make sure it's going to one hold this at a at a good level, give us enough stretching flexibility um, without having too much redundancy. So I think we'll figure that part out together. Um, until then. I'll say goodbye, turn the camera off, and I'll see you back here. Okay, so I have everything cleaned up and polished. Um, everything came out pretty darn well, I think. Um, try to get a little bit of shine on it for you. There does seem to be this little discolored band, and that I think is right where the metal kind of sits. That's something on the inside that I didn't want to be too aggressive about and start scraping and messing with any of the uh, uh, inside of the barrel diameter. So that's maybe a little imperfection. If I get bold, maybe I can some other time come back and see if I can do something about that. Maybe gently scrape at it. Maybe it's gunk. Um, actually, you know what? Let me grab one tool. Maybe I'll just be bold and do it right here in front of the camera. I'll be right back. go so I just brought my dental pick and I'll just do this little curved side and I'll just try to see if that's something I should pay a little bit more attention to if I can get it out hmm. I'm not seeing it really change as I look through the celluloid Like it's not gunk, it's not something that I can scrape out. So I'm going to leave that as it is and just kind of continue showing off the rest of the pen. Um, every, oops, if I can keep hold of it. So everything took on a nice, nice shine and polish. And we'll see once it gets all back together, we'll really kind of give it a twirl and show it off. So I was thinking, and I went back to the website, and I'll link it in the notes that I kind of used to guide me to take this apart. Um, do you remember how I said that this little plunger bit was kind of broken and chipped away at the end? Now I took a look at the image and it looks like, and granted, the demonstration or at least the written step-by-step -step with some 
pictures that I saw from the internet. There's a different models. It's um, not quite this one. I forget which one he said it was. Um, 90 something, but who knows? Um, you'll know once you look at the the link. But maybe his is a little bit bigger than than this pen, because I noticed that the thicker section of this plunger was a lot bigger, a lot more took up a lot more space than this little bit. So, I mean, I have a hard time believing with what I found in the pen that, you know, an inch of this thing was disintegrated in there. I didn't really find that kind of residue. And so I'm tempted to say that this is the length that it needs to be, or darn near close to it. And I toyed around with the idea of do I somehow get something to be more of a space filler to a space filler to extend the plunger or do I just let this be the size and what I was kind of thinking to figure this out was I was getting it put together like it would be in the barrel and so if I were to do this it naturally stops right there so what I would really have if I were to put the sack on completely it would stop there-ish and that's a very small bit of nipple or a sack to be honest with you that's what made me a little bit like nervous about this and so even if that were really hinged in there that's I guess it stretches and that's all you really need but I was I had my doubts and so the next thing I did was I went ahead and just kind of loosely put everything back together just so I could see how it would sit and this thing be careful it will fall forward um, I put a section, because remember there's also this going in there, this breather tube that's going to take up some of the space. So it can't just be plunging into that, smacking into it too forcefully. So I wanted to see where that would fall. And if I show, there's the breather tube comes down to almost mid-barrel, just a little, a little bit before that M in the in the engraving. So there it goes. And if I were to fully depress this, which actually means that the plunger goes all the way in, which I'm not sure that's what it's intended to be, I get it meet, almost meets it. So that, that to me is like, okay, too much more than that. Uh, might not be appropriate. So somewhere around the length of that is almost what it seems like the plunger should be. So I hemmed and hawed. I was like, do I do I give it more? Do I make something space fill in there? But you know what? I have plenty of sacks. I have the time to do it. So what I'm going to do for the first one is I'm going to cut the sack just as it were. If this were the full and correct length. I'm going to cut down the sack so that I get just that little bit. I'm not going to try to extend this or do anything extra to give me some space filler to kind of push that out anymore, but maybe if I have to, I'll find out. So I've got this. So let's see if I can figure out a decent way. So I've got this pushed all the way back being stopped by the threaded barrel and that's holding this firmly in place so if I just let's do centimeters just for the smaller markings so I'm going to start the one let's go beyond the two so that's one I just say 1.4 centimeters. That's what I'm going to cut. So that's what I'll do. I'll do this off camera so I don't go bumping the camera, but give me two seconds and I will line this up. And 1.45, somewhere right between that mark. Okay. Yeah. It feels weird. <laughs> That is not very much. It feels weird to have that little bit of sack to be on. Uh, and I brought my towel down just to put a little bit here, just so maybe I can get it onto 
into the sack a little bit better. And so topped up. See if I can start sliding it over. sack because it was a different pen after all the guy was showing me how to restore online um, mm, yeah no, it's actually not terrible get that stretched over there so what's really going to help it I mean that's definitely I mean it's got the good recoil I almost felt like maybe I cut it a bit too short. Maybe I should have just used the uh, a little crafting blade rather than just scissors. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right. So it goes. Sorry about the sack. But I'm gonna grab another 18. time be a little more generous with it and I'll do it off camera again so here we go that the the metal piece does have some lines on it so it is textured it does want to provide a little bit of a grip which is actually making it a little bit harder for me to slip this on but you know it's good design for the other way it keeps it in place this is all going to be friction fitted there we go I'm going to get it all the way up best I can right now okay and I did leave a little bit. This is a little bit tight. So I, rather than cut it under, I let myself give it a little bit more of a nipple. So I'm going to say that's me giving a little bit of room for air. And I don't think in the long run that's going to matter. Because this thing's actually pretty tight. And maybe that'll slip on there over time. But just a little bit of extra. Because I guess I'm half afraid that over time, if this is under a lot of tension, it'll just snap, so maybe that will be do me some good in the future. So I hope you're seeing this. I keep looking at it. I'm not really looking at my screen all the time, because I'm trying to do this visually. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to give it a wipe. Get some of that talc off the outside. And from here, it's actually got a good hold. It would go back in here. And just like the other vacuum fillers, I guess you're trying not to twist, but you just want the thing, the the metal part to seat. And then I'm using, I'm turning this, I keep calling it a barrel, I'm not sure what to call it right now. I'm just use that to kind of crimp it and keep it in place. And that is actually really good. That is tight, it springs back. It's got just every little play, but it's not really loose finger tightening that. I'm not going crazy. I'm not going to put any shellac in case I need to come back and do it. I'm not going to seal it because I think that's actually pretty darn tight. I kind of like that. Let's see what this does. Let's see if this lets me go all the way down. Yes, it does. It goes on nice and clean. That might be it. Button, button. It feels good. It feels springy. 
Let's see if I can show some innards. breather tube, a little space, and just have a little bit of space. So it comes down deep, but not all the way. Okay, let me get this on. I will, oh, no, just use this, why not? Let's get all this other stuff out of the way for a second. Get some of the dustiness off. Now they've got talc and grubby fingers all over it. backdrop why not use it so here we go this is the Miller previously owned by M Henningsen but I think overall other than a couple this does have a deeper scratch that I couldn't quite get polished out maybe it's showing up there it is I think you can see it and I think there was another little kind of scratch down here it's a little bit deeper but overall, all the surface and minor things kind of cleared up, and I'll get another coat of um, Renaissance wax on this. I don't think I did the barrel, I did the cap, just because it was kind of done. It was a nice shiny jewel on top, a good springy clip. And what I've noticed about this guy, he is a decently flexy nib. So I think I will hit pause, I'll get everything ready, and we'll do a writing sample, and we'll just talk about it for a minute. And I'm actually excited. I've never got to use one of these. So we'll take a pause. I'll get everything set up to write and we'll do a sample and I'll chat about it and I'll give you a peek at what I might be doing next. Well, I'm back a little bit later than I thought. Had some life get in the way. But I've got my pad down and I picked out this brown ink called Coffee Break from Colorverse. I think I've only ever dipped in it. I don't think I've ever really used it to do, to do much writing. So rather than go straight black, I thought, well, let's just give this guy a try. And I have a website that I've been using to kind of refer to um, this particular style of pen, this stretch vac filler, stretch filler, I guess you would call it. And it's pm-pens.com. And there's a guy named Jeff who has quite a few blog entries and some photos of um, Danish pens. I assume he's Danish. His name is Jeff. Um, does he have a last name on here? Mm -mm -mm. Maybe not. I don't know. It's just Jeff, G-E-O-F-F -F, at pmpens.com. So he's got a nice little suppository, oh, not suppository, repository, sorry about that of a lot of Danish pens and I've, I've actually learned a little bit of, about them and have seen some nice designs that I might want to pursue a few more of these. But the one that he has closest to mine, mine is a 648 and I kept looking at it to make sure, yes indeed, it's a 648 if I can get it zoomed in and focused. I can barely see it through the camera myself. Mm -mm -mm. There it is. There's a 648. Pretty sure you guys can double check me, but 648. Um, he has a 649, which looks almost identical to mine, and it has it has the same Greek geometric shape on the band. It's got the same clip and cap. Um, it even has a chevron like ink window body. So maybe there's a little different numbering system and there's subtle differences that I just don't see or know, but it looks like this is a, so if I talk about the Miller Pen Company, hey, what he's saying is the Miller Pen Company was established in 1908 by, uh, I'm going to try the act, not accent, but try the pronunciation, Johannes, Johannes, maybe, Iverson, and it was in Copenhagen. It was originally called the Johannes Iverson 
company, I guess, and then it became the Orion Pen Company in 1914, and then the Miller Pen Company in the 1930s. So I'm going to guess if this is a Miller Pen and it's using a stretch filling mechanism, I'm going to guess that this is a 1930s pen. I, had, I mean, I don't want to denigrate it, but I kind of have a hard time believing that this would have survived much into the 40s or 50s with however much um, other stuff was going on, especially once you got to the Parker 51, the late 40s, uh, or mid-40s, mid I think, I have to review. Um, so I'm going to guess this is a 30s, and we'll go from there. What else we got? Mm -mm -mm. No, it's just kind of there's some extra little notes about how he actually, this Iverson guy, patented um, this particular filling mechanism. And the, he says, do 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 mm, I had to click on the document and go through it. Maybe I will in my free time, but I could get a date in there at some point. But it sounds like this guy patented this particular system, maybe actually kind of following suit with the vacuumatics that came out in the late 20s, early 30s. So maybe we are looking at like a early to mid 30s kind of pen here so anyway let me go on to showing off the pen a little bit so i have it polished up i put some wax on i've already been touching it so it's already got some fingerprints on it but um i brought my handy dandy ruler to get the numbers boys happy Let's see if we can do a little bit of measurement on this guy. So, capped from tip to top. Looks like it's just over five, maybe five and an eighth inch, not quite five and a quarter. If we uncap it, we will get, I'm gonna put it right there and say, it goes to five, four and about five eighths, looks like it. And what else we have? How wide do we think it is? Maybe about half an inch at its widest, give or take just a touch. So overall, a pretty good pen. I like, I like the size of it, just being a um, kind of using the barrel as the reservoir. I kind of like that. That gives a little bit more girth for me. So it's a little, it's actually quite comfortable to hold it sits right there in the crook um, the section is smooth it kind of flares at the tip so I'm not going to slide off and I don't really feel any of the the screw that the cap would attach on to so that's pretty good I mean this is just me holding it for a few minutes so let's just see yeah Looks like the nib has a little bit of spring to it. I can just kind of put it on the paper and get some springiness to it. And can I post this thing? Let's see. Yeah, it does post. That does make it a touch back heavy, but not bad. I mean, I, I could work with this. It wants to pull a little bit, but I think I could be fairly comfortable riding with this most of the day. And it doesn't post very deeply. It, it feels like it's secure, like it goes just over the blind cap, and that's actually pretty good. We'll do the, well, well, I am chagrined. It does actually stand a little tighter than I thought it did. So I'll set that aside, and let's see if we can get a fill of it. Oh, air came out of that. I had not opened that in a while. Okay, let's see. Line cap off. Let's see if we get some nice bubbles. So here we go, just undone. The button's still nice and firm. It takes a bit of pressing. So am I gonna fill? Yeah, you can do that. That's of course easier. Yeah, either way, I'm gonna go thumb route. Let's see if I can bring it to the microphone. Get some bubbles. five or six before the bubble stopped. Let's see, do I have a rag available to me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotta wipe.
wiped off. Had to use my hand because I couldn't find a rag. It's over there. And am I able to see? Can we see how much it filled? Where is my light? Let's see if we can get a sense of how much it filled. Just curious. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. See the ink tumble? That actually fills really nicely. I can go most of the barrel now without seeing the light up until we get almost here. That's pretty good. That fills a lot. Okay. So I'll see if I can do some writing over the camera. And then I'll turn it so you can see. So I'm going to say... This is a Moon Miller. 648. It is a, I keep wanting to say squeeze filler, but it is a stretch filler. We're going to say about 1930s. And just to play the averages, we'll say 1935. And so what from what I can tell of the nib so far it definitely has a fine point um, it comes very fine it's got some narrow-ish shoulders so that's kind of one of the hallmarks of what I would have expected from a springy kind of flexy nib and that's a nice smooth feed going into it it's got a nice flat profile not too curved so it should give us some flex so let's just see if we just start with some thin lines and spread it out, yeah. Well, I don't have to press very hard at all. Oh, that's nice. I'm not riding super fast. It's pretty good. Uh, what else can I do? We'll just do some dynamic figure eights. Goes back to fine pretty quickly. So I'm not having to wait too long. And after doing all that, not sprung, it's still pretty flat. I like it. It is pretty smooth. Maybe just a touch scratchiness, and I might take it to a pad just to see if I can make it any more smooth and just check the alignment on it. Looks like it's a touch out, it's rather tight. Maybe it's got a touch out of alignment, but I'll fiddle with it. It doesn't look bad. Okay, let's see. How wet do we have it? Nah, decent wet. Not overly wet, but it lays down a nice wet line, which is, I guess that's good for the flow to open up. Oh, oh, oh. Did I lose it? I may have pushed a little too much. a little bit. Maybe the tines are a little bit tight because they look very tight just looking at it. Let's go ahead and do our, our sentence. before it's not getting as much I'm gonna have to play with this a little bit but get it writing it writes and then it's just not liking my flex anymore whether that's the ink or the nib I'm not sure yet but if it were to flow if I get the ink going I get this nib tuned up pretty well 
I think this would be a fun rider. I mean, riding with it so far, I'm not really getting ir any irritation uh, from the threads, from this lip. It actually, it actually ex helps me keep it in place. Like my fingers don't want to ride up with this one. It's actually kind of like that. And it's definitely thick enough. It's comfortable for my average, I'm a five foot nine guy, so it's actually comfortable for my average hands. And it has room to spare in the crook of my thumb. And if I can just get it consistent, this would be a fun rider. Yeah, it's going now and it's just riding just fine. So I'll explore the flexiness of it. And maybe I can update you on a future video. But overall, I think I kind of like this one. I might leave this one filled and I am in need of a new daily rider. I might just have this one um, along with me so I can figure it out a little bit more. But let me go ahead and cap my ink. I'll turn the pad a little bit so you can get some views of what was just going on. Yeah. So initially some good flex, fine line. Then I lost the flex a little bit somehow. It just kind of like rail railroaded and tracked a little bit on me. But whenever you get the ink flowing again, it writes nicely. So overall, this is a great this is a great thing. And I like the filling system. It definitely has a good ink capacity. I'd be curious to see how much I could squeeze out of it. But there it is. A nice little stretch filler, one that I haven't seen before. So now maybe you know about it. Get a few of these. And Let's see. Ooh, what was I gonna grab? Oh yes, the T's. So we've done, what have we done? We've done button fillers, lever fillers. Um, I kinda did a horrible example of a vacuumatic, which I still owe you a better one since I fumbled that one so much. And now we've done a stretch filler. So I think we're gonna shift gears for our next one and we'll come back to some Schaefer's. This is going to be a Schaefer. Did I, which one did I grab? Ooh, I'm going to be ambitious with you guys. We're going to do a snorkel filler. And this one is going to be a open nib, a spade kind of design, two-tone spade nib. And yeah, it's run smoothly. So we'll get into that this time, next time. And these can be tricky. Maybe I should do a touchdown, but I'll make a game time decision at that point. If I can find a touchdown that I haven't done yet, maybe a touchdown would be a simpler way to start if people just want to progress. But if I don't, this will be it. This will be our snorkel filler for next time. All right, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give me a like, give me some comments. Let me know what I'm doing well, what I'm doing poorly. Anything you know about Miller pens, anything you want to add, share the knowledge, and we'll see you next time. Bye.